What was actually your question? No, I was just wondering, do you live in Vegas? I don't, but uh... Is it hot in here or is it just me? <laughs> Gentle control. Boom. Oh, that's nasty. This morning I'm going to train with Mike Isratel here, Lift ATX, which is my favorite place to spend a Saturday morning and has been for two and a half years since I moved to Austin. It's a combination of gangster rap and death metal music in a garage. I've trained all around the world and it's got the best atmosphere of anywhere I've ever trained. It's going to be way too loud today, so apologies if you don't get to hear me and Mike. Apologies if YouTube copyright strikes the video or whatever, but it's just too much fun for us to not do it. Big boy day. We got a packed day today. We got to get you your coffee in you, your caffeine, your whatever you need. Dr. Mike's here. Mm. It's the intent that counts. It's very important on a Saturday for any upper body session to begin with carbs. Low kisses by my ear, low. What's going on? Good to see you. you okay? Day. Mike, nice meeting you. How are you? What are we hitting today? What is huh? the day? Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. Okay. So that's a good flip. It's like asking a fuckboy about his relationship status. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Remember when that was a selection? Yeah. On Facebook? It's complicated. In a relationship with myself, it's complicated. We're doing a lot of like chest and shoulders and tricep stuff. Fuck yeah. It. A lot yeah. of chest and are shoulders. You guys, and are you guys using that Cybex machine? You want it? I, uh, we have caps first, but afterwards, yes. Okay, we will. No, no, please. No, no, my God. Just use okay. it, and then we'll be next in line. You joining me or not? No. No, my caps are sore. <laughs> that was a warm up. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll be six and a half. Uh, how many times could you have done that? How many times? Could you have done that weight? I would have gone 210, 230, 250 and stayed at about 12-ish reps, maybe pushed a little bit more, and that would have been four sets. Today we'll do one giant drop set. Is that okay with you? It'll be really fun. Okay, cool. I'm in. You will do full range of motion until I say halfway. Then you do the bottom only, come halfway up and right back down. Okay. And when you come down, I want you to come down under slow control yep. and hold the bottom position for one full second count every single rep. But at the top, just pulse up and come back down. Cool? I have trepidation. Good. My heart rate is high. It's caps, Chris. You'll be fine. Yeah, I know. I know. One second hold at the bottom. Yes. Now halfway up only. Good. One second at the bottom. Good. Rack, 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 rack. Uh, oh, the fuck is. Right back in right now, repeat. Full range first. Uh, Halfway up only. Go! Uh, Very good. Oh! One, one last one. This one is just halfway up to begin with. Begin. Only halfway. Ten total reps. Two more. Uh, Come on, Chris. All right, now don't go anywhere. Go all the way to the bottom. Lock your knees out. Lock your knees out. Hold it. That's it. Oh. Good job. That's it. Oh, my God. Are done. Oh, that was awful. That was mean. That was mean. But not a lot of time spent and oh, lots of, lots of working out. Oh, man, I can't. I can't. It doesn't feel like my feet are attached yeah, isn't to my that weird? legs. You're like walking in big boots or something. Yeah, I want to look cool around the high fecundity individuals. You look well fecund, don't you? <laughs> oh my god, what's that? Um, is that like, is that like, God? <laughs> when not, I'm not, you can finish your guys' sets. We're not gonna push you off. How long you got? 
Quit we, pushing you We can also do something else while Plus. they do this. Yeah. How long do you guys think you have left on this? We just started, but again, y'all can do this and then we'll work it up. No, 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 no. butts required. Uh, we'll do it. No, no, no. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We got you in 15. 15. 15 All right. Deal. We're going to come back in 15, and I swear to God, if you guys are still here, I'm going to politely ask how many seconds or minutes you have left. We can just do a standing, standing cable. I haven't done these. This is one of the trendy movements that you've brought back in, yeah. along with that lying down flat bench yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the trendy ones I haven't done yet, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I may need more cues. So just step forward, really reach back behind yourself, and just curl. Yes. Is there any movement in the shoulder? No. A little bit's okay, but nothing on purpose. <laughs> yep. Control the eccentric and then really take a second at the bottom. Very good. How many? Like 10. Can I, can I say hi to you real quick? Yeah. Of course. I'm, my name is Andrew. Yeah. Everyone who wants to get into like weightlifting or everything, I'm just like, just go to Dr. Mike's oh, channel. Oh shit, uh, thank, thank you so much. Like, you're fucking hilarious, super knowledgeable. Get after something it. With you yes, quick? I would be honored. Remember your first, first, working set now? first working set is next. Uh, one rep away from failure or so. Remember that number, because you're going to have to repeat that number twice. You made me do this yesterday. Yeah. Fucking suck. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. However many sets it takes. So you'll watch me do this. After I'm done with a few, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna hold on to the handles probably still. I'm just gonna chill for like five seconds and I'm gonna walk forward. So and this that's is how the reps reps again? Maya rep match. Mm -hmm. Maya rep match. Maya rep match. You use Maya reps to match your first set on the second, third, fourth, etc. So if you got, I got 15 on my first set, but I gotta get 15 again on the second, 15 on the third, we have three sets today. Go, go, go. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Diesel. <laughs> I'm sure that you could probably, like, Claude or ChatGPT that. Uh, yeah. Please list the 100 most common, most epic spotter gym glossary oh, terms. I bet. I don't know. It's got to start watching videos. Once it starts watching all of YouTube, it's going to get real smart. Game over. Have you got a, you, you must have a mic, mic bot in uh, internally somewhere, do you? Little LLM that people can be like, my fucking yeah. shoulders yeah. hurt when I do that. Once yeah, we're working, we're working on it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. It has, uh, still has trouble figuring out what I would say and what general fitness bodybuilding.com articles from 2002 would say. So. It's very important that we distinguish between the two. Yeah. That last inch, follow through. Yes. Yep. <gasps> yep.
my uh, my that my that guy, my this one hurts from the fucking just dumps. Nice. but like fuck. Yeah. First ever forearm training. First ever forearm training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the secret? Fucking same as everything else that people are good at. Yeah. Genetics. Genetics. <laughs> and then effort and time. That's yes. Most of it. Yes. But the single largest contributor was choosing different parents, yeah. which literally you couldn't have done. Yeah. So. Slow. Rack. Ref. How many? Uh, two more. Good technique. Finish. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. The fucking worst thing about really hard calf training at the very beginning of a workout is that for the rest of the day, you're like, yeah, you can't stand up in a sort of sturdy, masculine manner. You're like a wacky, waving, inflatable, yes. arm flailing tube man outside of a car sale. But with big calves. But with fucking jacked calves. It's not the women everywhere that's making me shake. I promise. It was calves at the Just start of the calves. session. Is hey, this Danielle. This is like, uh... oh, you're kidding. Right now? Time the fuck out of that. Yes. Nailed it. Yes. 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 He likes this way. I, I mean, we're going to make it wave. Thanks. <laughs> Do my due diligence. Thanks. This is lovely. I mean, yesterday we trained a collective up north and it was silent except for the sound of our dark thoughts and inappropriate jokes. And today it's whatever the opposite is. Loud. Uh, I love it. I think for a Saturday morning, this is exactly what I want. Really? It feels like the end of the week. To me, it feels like, oh fuck, like I'm being social and I got a little bit in the tank and it's like fucking, you know, I quite like it. Yeah. If you're single, this is a fucking place to go to Austin, Texas to talk to, well, gee whiz, to talk to nice young ladies <laughs> that, are, that are into fitness. Oh, well, well, gee whiz, young man, you sure look like you're ready to reproduce, oh boy. <laughs> and it looks like you're taking care of your health, which is really important. Something I've noticed ever since the session I did with you and Jared, um, and you kind of pulled the rug out from underneath the tempo on eccentric as it's not really about the tempo it's about control yeah and what we do is we use the tempo as the easiest proximate cue for control yeah and then whenever i see you doing reps at that kind of speed nice. i'm like oh yeah he's just getting it to the soft pause position reaching chest up and then pressing sure. it's got fuck all or less significantly less to do with the like one Two, totally. three, totally. four. We just use that as a cue yes. to get people to control. Yes, yes. That's the most easy one for me to see it on it. Nothing else is moving, there's yeah. no movement, it's just a pull. Chest up at the bottom. Oh. Gentle. Rack. Rack, 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 rack. A little heavy. Yeah, yeah. 185 will be a good weight for you. What do you look for when you're looking at a Smith machine? Is it the original Cybex or not? These are good. It's the best Smith ever made. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, thin bar. Yep. Very smooth. Low friction. It's not designed to feel heavier at the top than the bottom. So it fucks on, on all categories. Yeah. Control the descent, pause at the chest without sinking in, and then come up two thirds to three quarters of the way up. Don't lock out, come back down. Okay. 
<coughs> press, press, all the way, all the way, all the way, rack. Eight reps, very good. Do you have one of these? At home? No, I place. don't. I don't. It would, it would have to be used, and I don't know where to get one. Oh, the fuck! It's like a what were those drugs that everyone was taking during Wolf of Wall Street? Quaaludes. Quaaludes. Yeah. It's, oh my god! You got the fucking original 1980s Quaaludes. Yeah. It's a collector's edition. Oh yeah. <laughs> Big chest. Oh. Two thirds of the way up. There you go. No dogs inside of the gym. A lot. A lot. They let me train, but yeah. just for today. I somehow got in. I mean, the other thing is no gyms inside of the dog. That's what you don't need, you know? You know? Uh, sign. Come on. How many was that? 15. Was that your first set? No. Second. But did that match your first yeah. set? Did it? Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. So, is the way that you're doing these, you create a a target number with your first set when you're freshest yeah and then on subsequent sets when you're more fatigued you continue to work off that but you use the Maya rep thing to allow you to always yep. hit it yep right okay it's just a way to smash in a lot more volume in a non-arbitrary way yes because you're like oh how many more sets do i have to do however many sets you planned but now you know it's going to take a lot of effort yep because it could normally be like i did 15 i feel good I slacked off and did eight on the next one. I could have done 10. Yep. This way, it's like, you're going to get all the volume you promised. You're always going to hit 15. It just might take a little while. Exactly. And research shows that putting in the volume is what determines growth by far. Just get all the reps in. Oh. Sets, breakdowns, all that stuff, rest times. Uh, a feature, but not super important. All the reps you need to get in, very important. All right, let's get about six. Big chest, gentle control. I notice uh, you tend to seem quite serene before you start your set. Yeah. And then switch the ancestral trauma button on only when required. Yeah. So like Jared and I have come to this conclusion that uh, we're now sufficiently able to contract our muscles hard and we're strong enough that hyping up at the beginning of a set just increases our probability of injury. That also doesn't yield much of anything because you don't need to be hyped for the first couple reps. You could do those in your sleep. You need to get hyped for the last couple reps. So you'll see my facial intensity incrementally increase throughout. But one of the reasons I'm serene before a set right at the beginning is because, you know, like uh, there's so many distractions around us. When there's hot guys, hot girls, all the shit going on, almost music, the scene, thoughts of like, oh, I'm like Mike, I'm an influencer, people know me. Do I have to look a certain way? Do I have to act a certain way? How are people looking at me? All this clutter, just noise. And then so before I go, I, if you imagine the noise like decibel, like signals on an audio input. And then I go. Just That's very cool. Ocean of calm. That's very cool. I can't get my mojo and connect with my body really well if I have sociological clutter in my brain. So I have to let it sink. Which is why you tend to have your gym totally silent, totally empty. It's empty only because I have no friends. <laughs> well, the, and I, you live in the middle of nowhere. For sure. Yeah, I like uh, I love training with gyms with other people around. Um, I don't like music yep. when I train, uh, especially music I didn't choose. It doesn't bother me, but like it's another sociological input that has to get cleared before I go. Because like whatever the fuck this is, reggaeton. This has nothing to do with lifting in, in my soul at all. Like it's just some dude talking about fucking bitches or whatever the fuck. That is true.
Yes. Here we go. 16, 15. How's the lat insertion and pack and whatever else it is that niggles a little bit after yesterday and today? It's okay so far. Cool. If you were to, if I wanted to give you the task of fucking your shit up as quickly as possible in a gym, yeah. where would you go and what would you do? For me personally? Yeah, yeah given your yeah. physiology. I would do a heavy set of walking dumbbell lunges because it somehow fucked my pecs up. And then I would do a heavy set of bench like set of five to failure. And my pecs would probably both like get micro tears. Yeah. It'd be really fun. Gentle touch. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, one more. Rack. Glorious. What's up, guys? What's up, brother? What's up? Oh, yeah. I'll jerk off some of your videos last night. Hi, man. Did you not? It's a pleasure, bro. With that yeah. hand? Did I not? Oh, yeah. With that hand. Why you take a quick hand with it? Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a pleasure. Anytime I have someone like asking me for advice or whatever, I'm, like, go for his videos. Oh, fuck. Just watch a bunch of them. He's, he's gonna, it's fucking hilarious. Cool thing to think about that we'd never be able to track. But think about how many pounds of lean tissue have been directly derived from things that you've said on the internet. Like, that's fucking cool. Fuck GDP growth, fuck the happiness index, fuck unemployment. Look at how many pounds. You wanna see employment? Of that's employment right there. That's a, that's a full economy, baby. How did you meet Crystal? On Facebook. No way. Yeah. Good, okay. Your wife, to me, seems like maybe as non-fungible of a human as you are. Non-fungible. Like, just one in a fucking hundred thousand, one in a million. Very unique constitution of Very. fucking shit that's thrown together. Yeah. And you found her on Facebook. Yeah, she was uh, in the commenting in, like, powerlifting circles, and so was I. And she, like, liked the posts here and there, and I read her comments. And I would like uh, be like, oh, this bitch is kind of smart. And I clicked on her picture and it kind of looked like her eyes were too close together. I was like, Ugh. but uh, she was like in medical school and everything. And I was like, all right, med school, that's a huge flex. Because at that point in my life, I, I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't looking for any more flings. Uh, I was looking for- How long ago was this? Oh, uh, geez, 10 years ago. Oh. And, uh, but I was interested in like serious people. Cause like fuck sluts are dope and I love them to death, but like if you're not in an advanced degree program, we're never getting married. It's just not gonna happen, unless you're somehow otherwise incredibly accomplished. Um, and so uh, I actually, uh, you know, she kept popping up and shit. And so I was like, fuck it, I'll run some game. And so I actually DM'd her. What was your opening gambit? I was like, hey, do you want to hear like a fucking kind of tripped out story? And she was like, yeah. And then that's what it. What was the story? So it was actually a true story about a, a, a kid that was asking me questions on Facebook all the time, but uh, he was uh, very awkward and he would say the most absurd shit in the world and he never listened to a thing I said uh, to the point where I had to tell him he put comma IFBB pro in his Facebook profile and I had to explain to him that that's not a thing that you could just say. But he was like, but all my favorite influencers, they say that. And I'm like, yes, yes. Well, you see, you have to earn that. It's like putting PhD after you. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, well, how do I earn it? And I was like, you gotta weigh like 100 kilos like lean on stage. Yeah. And he's like, okay. He, he was like, he, he, he trained very sporadically and he was like 16 years old. And he's like, how long is it gonna take for me to do that? And I was like, maybe never, but years and years. And it was like, okay, I think like two years, I think that's good. And I'm like, okay. And it was just, just all kinds of fucking wacky shit like that. And that was what bonded you? Yeah. This delusional teenager. Yeah, so we chatted and then she's like, hey, I got to study for like a medical exam, so I can't talk on the internet anymore, but I'll be back in a few months. And I was like, in a few months? And then she was back. And we started chatting and then we met up in real life and well, we were both adults, so. Fuck, that's cool. Yeah, it's a trip. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I talked to her on the phone for the first time, like after a few DMs, 
And uh, it was, uh, we spoke all night long. Like the morning sun came up and we were still on the phone talking. I was like, yeah, okay, there's something here. Fuck him. Yeah. Come on then. Come on then, love a boy. Just like that. Elbows forward. Yeah, perfect. Pause at the bottom of every rep. Are we sinking elbows in or keeping elbows high? So like... Elbows this way. There? Whatever you feel. Okay. Four sets. Your first set matches all the others. Or Pirate the match. subsequent sets match the first set, technically. Yeah. Because it would be impossible to do it the other way. If you can't time travel, sure. But you get strong enough, Chris, you can do all time. I do not need to follow the flow of time. I do not need to follow the flow of time. <laughs> Come on, young Mike. <laughs> so I didn't realize uh, until now that it makes the first set very important. Yeah. Uh, and I'm usually like, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm getting into it. I'm, I'm putting my foot down. I'm starting to think about it. Yeah. But I'll really ramp up on, you know, I, set two and three. I, I'm not a big fan of that approach. Yes. Because getting into it should be part of your warm up sets. Your first set should be when you have the most energy. You work the hardest during your first set. And then the other sets, you just add on the volume. So the first set matters. Especially in this. So you're inheriting that first set in a different kind of way. Totally. All right. Good. Elbows, in, uh, grip in more, grip in, two inches. There you go, good, 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 good. Rack. 14. I lost count. 14. Thank you. Question. Uh, you're 30 when you meet Crystal? Ish, 30 ish? Okay. Some show. 30 when you meet what would be your future wife? Had tried to work on games so that you didn't get intimidated when talking to really hot women? But you're talking to like a really smart woman that you think I've has never got, been intimidated by a smart person in my entire life. But you're talking to someone that you think has got genuine long term potential. So there's a lot more to risk there. No. And like, ah, hot chicks are 10 a penny. None of it's conscious. Nothing to risk at all. So uh, with Crystal, there was no like fucking hell. Like I need to, zero. Wow, that's amazing. Not so you were made to feel time. very comfortable on a level and you'd already built up that. By the time that I talked to her, my game was pretty airtight. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's good, good training for when it matters. <laughs> but, uh, yes. I was, stay ready, you don't have to get ready, sure. so to speak. I was much more intimidated talking to uh, super hot girls uh, than I was ever intimidated talking to girls who, for whom it mattered or intelligent girls. One of my biggest factors of intimidation for hot girls is a big contradiction in my brain, which is I want to be around you because I want that sweetness between your legs but I don't want to fucking talk to you because you're usually full of fucking silly putty. And so the idea of like, if I'm at a club or a bar talking to girls, like number one, my thought is I don't want to fucking talk to any of you dumb ass bitches. Fuck I'm going to talk to you about. Because I have uh, to. It's too loud anyway. I can't talk to you about shit, right? And you know I have to and I have to, blah, 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 blah. But uh, when I'm talking to smart girls that can engage intellectually, that's my, that's my world. world. Domain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I know that, I know that feeling massively. Yeah. Also, most girls will nerf their intelligence around guys they're not intimidated which is pr profoundly ridiculous but i understand where they're coming from and Especially so given that most guys are retarded sure well most smart girls i've written off as not smart because they never came off as smart uh I, I used to be told like like in high school people are like uh you know it's like what, what do girls like in a guy and a ton of girls as well as a ton of older people would say intelligence that's the, uh, that's the biggest fucking lie i've ever been told in my life what nobody out here likes intelligence what, are you fucking kidding me like, if, if girls liked intelligence, I'd be swimming in that shit from day one. I was not. Now, of course, like, I'm not very facially attractive. Don't have confidence, which is a huge killer. I'm not tall. So it's like three strikes against me right offhand. And the confidence one was the biggest. Now, when you get some confidence, you're in. Now I'm, like, relevant and famous and super rich 
And so like now it's just like fucking money press. I also don't need it because I have a wife. But the intelligence thing, never I've never met a single girl who I was convinced was actually attracted to intelligence. Yeah. Crystal says she is, my wife, but uh, she also doesn't find my body attractive. She's not even into all the muscles. She could give but a think shit. about what intel uh, lots of other things are proxies for intelligence. Humor, uh, the ability to is he, humor is really a proxy for intelligence. I think it's some of the funniest people I've ever fucking met are fucking retarded. In certain ways, but okay. I think that there's a particular type of humor which can be born out of intelligence okay. and incisiveness. You not agree? Uh, maybe. Uh, sure. I just uh, I don't know the space intellectually. I don't know if that's true empirically. I'm, I'm sure smart people can make. Uh, a much better cascades of humor, much more observational, can put out, point out relational patterns, analogies, and stuff that are humorous. But uh, usually, uh, you know, that's a kind of that's intelligence. But it's not like, like when I think girls are attracted to intelligence, I think like to tell them your test scores from college and they're like start getting wet. I've never seen that transpire a single time. Money, competence. Yeah, yeah. I, I, competence, like I don't know if women care about competence. They care about where you sort in the social hierarchy. Um, and as long as you're like taller and manlier and you talk to them like this, they love that. That's for sure true. Uh, it's by no means clear what else. Now, of course, like, like guys say they like XYZ in a girl, but they really like something else. Girls say they like XYZ in guys, but the evidence from the relationships they pursue is otherwise. What a black pill. Often, not always. What a fucking black pill. Let's get it, let's get it, Chris. I don't mean to sound too salty and all that stuff. Mm. I think a better way to couch it is there are attraction at face value isn't simply an agglomeration or a integration, a synthesis of all variables. It's a, a tiered process. And if you pass certain tiers, yes, yes. you're welcome to others. Like, like little gates in a lock yeah. or something. And then you bump. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So like, if I was gonna chat those girls up and I was single, uh, I'd have to have a way in for them to be like, okay. Yeah. And it'd have to be something. It has to be status, renown, presence, money, status, dress, training, size, familiarity. They've yes. seen me before. We did one of these before. Mm -hmm. So then all the other stuff matters. So that's one thing. That's it. Like familiarity is a super interesting one, especially for like the really really black belt guys out there. How many guys that work in an office of some kind end up getting attracted to some chick and they're like, she's a strong five. I'm just around her a lot. And yeah. there's something about being around someone a lot that I don't know what the fuck's going on. Sure. You go to the same run club every Saturday, you go to the same gym four times a week at the same time and there's that same chick in there. Sure. If she's single and you're single and you're kind of sort of looking, yeah. there's like this, inflationary value that yeah. happens you know what i mean local maximum and familiarity is like no one's ever talking about the mate value of it because it's inherently an interpersonal thing yeah. as opposed to held by either person individually yeah so i think things like humor things like intelligence things like long-term mate value kindness openness and listening they don't get you any attraction points with girls unless you have an outward manifestation of deep status, which can be as simple as just ball, yep. just confident, like, what's yep. up? And she's like, ooh, okay, all right, he's not afraid. He's not tucking his tail from other alpha males. And so that entry point is huge. And so like guys who are nerdy, kind of shy, could be smart, super caring, super awesome, super funny. They got nothing because they don't have just fucking giant balls. There's almost every bitch in the world, if you don't have giant balls, the exact analogy here with girls is, if you don't look like I could fuck you, I'm not trying to fuck you. And if you're the best girl in the world, you're gonna be my best friend. And it's gonna be real sad, you're gonna watch a lot of rom-coms by yourself. But if you look like you could get it, then are you smart? Are you intelligent? Go past that lock, Are you, are you funny, one. can I talk to you? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Mike, right, sweetie. Steady stream canine lifting companions. You all done? 
Bye, girls. Uh, Good session. Your hip thrust okay, performances go. inspired me to do better in my own life. Yes. It was legendary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was actually your question? No, I was just wondering, do you live in Vegas? I don't, but uh, my heart. So he's actually on a plane flying over here right now for business meetings, and he's watching the game on the plane. I would hate to sit next to him if Michigan's losing. Huge pleasure, ladies. Thanks Take luck, care. Ben. Some other shit. Bye, girls. Is it hot in here or is it just me? Like literally, it's physically hot, isn't it? It's getting warm now. I didn't mean to say that when the girls left. Although it's getting, it's they were getting quite, quite, quite good looking ladies. Oh, <laughs> cool. What's this? I'm gonna do a set of 30. What? Maya, rep, what? Maya reps of close grip bench. Okay. And I'm gonna be in here for a little cause I'm gonna be cranking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I'm done, we take these off. You get the plates, you do a set of 30 as well. There's so many naked boys here. Good fucking god. Oh yeah, there's some fucking big dudes. Are we allowed to pet them or will it bite me? Always pet them. Always pet them. Let's see. Oh, okay. Barbells. Hit it. That is fucking nasty. Oh, oh. Boom. Oh, that's nasty. Oh. Beautiful. Ah. For everybody that's at what my direct forearm Routine is, I've never trained. Yesterday was the first time I've ever directly trained forearms. Today's the second time. Come on. <laughs> Motherfucker. Ah! <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to run away from it. Oh, sorry, no, all you. Fuck. How many did you get the first set? 12. 12 again. And you can rest it on that thing. Careful little slips, you gotta kinda hold on to it. Yeah. Here we go, Chris. Show off a little bit. Bro, these fucking, this just won't stop. Yeah, you're gonna be sore for a little while. Motherfucker. You need bigger forearms, Chris. The linchpin of the physique. The calves of the arms. Yes, it's a shit analogy because people are like, yeah, calves don't matter. You're like, right, right, right. Yeah. I get a little bit of a stick on the internet for standing very still when listening to people or watching them or talking to them. And uh, I'd never noticed that I did it until someone brought it up on a previous vlog. And I've realized after talking to some friends, every club promoter does it because we've spent literal 10,000 hours like this, or like this, or like this, on the front door of a nightclub. I've like largely three poses. Every so often when, I don't, when I'm in between, I'll be here. I have like three to four poses. I just don't move because I like trained my fucking physiology to just stand still when people are yeah. talking and shit's happening. Yeah. So what are we doing? So I can just go first and knock mine out and then you go after and finish the workout. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I do this thing where today I don't focus on shoulders. 
but my shoulders recover quickly and so do most people, side delts. And so I train my side delts right now in this mesocycle every single time I train. So this is the end of the workout. It's very lightweight, but it's a my rep set. Last time I got 42, so this time it's 45. I just add some reps every time. Yep. 45 oh, total so you're reps. Going into workout Maya rep, uh, uh, rep progression. As opposed to previously with the Maya reps, what we've been doing today is Correct. do a first set, match it. Yes. You're doing last session, Correct. beat it. Correct. Correct. Cool. Let's go. Cool. So I'm going to do 45 total. And then as soon as I'm done, you go and do 45. I do 45? Yeah, we put the tens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Is that cool? Fuck. Well, I mean, probably not, but I'll do it. I, I Yes, I, it will happen. I'm not going to say it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. That'll do, baby. All right, darling. Where are you going tonight? <laughs> girls, girls, one pound Jaeger bombs. One pound Jaeger bombs. God, you you've, you've been in the British club scene a long time, huh? Oh, man. I can drop into degenerate club promoter mode fucking instantly. In seconds. Beautiful technique, Chris. I get the sense it's maybe a tiny bit light. 45 reps, Chris. You'll be just fine. Pause at the top for an extra challenge. There you go. Up a little higher. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Chris. Top, hold at the top. There you go. Control the eccentric. That was perfect. You were right. <laughs> That's it, man. That's the workout. Good fucking session. I got to go and speak to Richard Dawkins on stage later That's on. Crazy. That'll be a fucking trip. Uh, I appreciate the fuck out of you, man. Likewise. Like I love, I love what you're doing. You know, so great. So, like this era of fitness, I'm so jealous of like Gen Alpha. There's tons of shit that Gen Alpha's got wrong. But think about how much more dog shit information on the internet was for like bros. Only a decade ago. Only a decade ago. Yeah. The fucking MISC forums on bodybuilding.com desperately trying to find out if blueberry extract and Christian Thibodeau are going to fucking be able to fix your like side delts. Yeah. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Chris, I appreciate the fuck out of you, man. Thanks for featuring and uh, we should do this more often. Well, something tells me we're going to.